you got a limit problem where roots are involved, but we start the same way we always do. We're taking, in this case, what t is approaching, so zero, and we're plugging that in for the t's within this function. When you plug in, you should find that you get zero over zero back, right? So as we know now, that's a problem. The only other option we have up to this point, whenever we get zero over zero back, is to do some kind of factoring. Now factoring is really not a way to go with this problem. If we have roots involved, what we should use as an approach is conjugates. So take the root portion of this, being the numerator, take the conjugate of that. So the conjugate of that would be the square root of t squared plus 9. And since this is minus 3, conjugate would be plus 3. Multiply that conjugate to the numerator and denominator. If you do that, right now we're in simplifying mode, even though it may not look like it. But uh, since we're in simplifying mode, we need to bring the limit along to remind us at some point when this all gets simplified, we need to reinsert 0 in for t. So we continue to apply the limit. And if I multiply out the conjugates up here, thing I appreciate about multiplying out the conjugates is I only have to multiply the first and the last terms, right? Because outside, inside terms cancel. If you multiply the first terms, you got some roots that are going to cancel, leaving you with t squared plus 9. And then if you multiply last terms, you got the negative 3 and the positive 3, so minus 9 would be left. Now that is all over. Now this is important. It's going to be t squared times that conjugate we multiplied by, right? Don't multiply that out. You want to leave that factored because your goal here is to be able to cancel stuff. So the only way I can cancel stuff is if I still have a factored form. If I clean up the numerator, 9 will cancel, right? And you'll notice you've got t squared left, and conveniently, since we didn't multiply out the denominator, we got a t squared down there. So since this t squared has not been multiplied through, since it's a factor down here, I can do some canceling again. And since I'm doing a lot of canceling here, let's go ahead and write the next step out so we can see what we have left over. We're going to have the limit as t approaches 0. Apply to the simplified form. Everything disappeared from the top after some canceling, so 1 is on top. Uh, denominator. I've got the original conjugate I multiplied by. At which point, that's as simplified as it's going to get. So now I take 0, what t is approaching. I plug in for t. I see if I get a real answer back, which I should if I've simplified correctly. Uh, if we plug in 0, we've got 1 over. Let's see, that would be 0 squared plus 9, be the square root of 9, which is 3, plus 3 get one-sixth back as our limit. Just like we do on all these problems, you start by plugging this number in and seeing if you get a real result, which we don't. We get 0 over 0 back. So since we're dealing with absolute value, we must explore the left-hand limit, and we must explore the right-hand limit. We get the same thing back for both. Whatever that answer is, that's our answer to the limit up here. We get different answers, then the limit doesn't exist. Now, we need to apply the limit to something. So how we set this up. Basically, we change the absolute value. So on each of these expressions, we're applying our left and right-hand limits to. Our denominator remains the same. Absolute value is not in the denominator, so that stays as x minus 3. But in the numerator, since I'm approaching 3 from the left for this first one, I'm going to take the x minus 3 that was inside the absolute value and apply a negative to it. We're approaching from the negative side. If you want to look at it that way. And for the right-hand side, coming in from the positive side, 
take the absolute value off, and you leave the expression of x minus 3 as is. That's how we set it up. And then you think back to some of these other problems we've discussed so far and how factoring has come into play to help us simplify these things. Notice that you have x minus 3 over x minus 3, right? So this x minus 3 and this x minus 3 cancel out. And what am I left with here? Negative 1 because of this negative. So basically, I'm taking this limit and I'm applying it to negative 1. If I apply it to a value, well, anytime I apply a limit to a value, I'm going to get that value back. So the limit as x approaches 3 from the left as it's applied to negative 1 is negative 1. And then notice down here, these x minus 3's will cancel, leaving you with just 1. If you take the limit as x approaches 3 from the right, apply it to just a value of 1, you get 1 back. So from the left, we got negative 1. From the right, we got 1. Those are different. That means the limit as x approaches 3 applied to this function does not exist. Okay, if we're going to take the limit as x approaches 3, apply to this rational function, start the same way as always. You take 3, you plug in, right? If we get the indeterminate value of 0, 0 back, we try to factor. We try to use conjugates. It's absolute value. We use left-hand and right-hand limits, right? That's what we got going so far. But if you plug in 3 here, you don't get 0 over 0 back, right? You get 5 over 0 back, which is supposed to be undefined. So if you encounter a situation that's supposed to be undefined, once again, we explore limits from the left and the right-hand sides. And we do that because if this is going to be undefined, so it would not exist, we'd have to show from the left and the right why it doesn't exist. So we apply this limit. No change is necessary on the function. We apply these limits to the original function. And remember, you always have to apply this limit notation to something. You've got to apply it to some kind of function. So how are we going to find what these are? Well, since this is an undefined scenario, we're going to go to the graph. You go to the graph of the original function. We are trying to answer what the limit is as x approaches 3 from the left and what the limit is as x approaches 3 from the right. Well, here's where 3 is. From the left, I can only travel on this piece. If I travel on this piece, we're going downwards. So we're going to negative infinity. From the right, we'd be traveling on this piece. Going upwards. We go to positive infinity. So from the left, it's negative infinity. Whoa, hey, how you doing there? And from the right, it's positive infinity. These do not match, meaning this limit does not exist. All right, piecewise defined function. Find the limit as x approaches 2 as it's applied to this function. Well, it's broken up into two pieces where these domain restrictions revolve around the number that we happen to be approaching for x. Isn't that convenient? What that means we need to do is we need to break off and look at the limit as x approaches 2 from the left applied to this function and the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of this function. Assuming those are the same values, that value gives us the answer to the limit overall. Now you'll note how I'm applying the limit to this function. Um, but as I look at it for this 2 from the left, well, 2 from the left would be where my x values are less than 2, right? So it would make sense to maybe focus in on this piece right here. 
So I could do a little bit better down here than saying the limit as x approaches 2 from the left apply to this function. In fact, what I could do, if I could take the function out, and I could put in specifically x squared plus 3, because I know that's the piece I'd be traveling on from the left. And as long as I'm at it, just to see where we're going here, if we're going from the right, values are greater than 2. So we'd be traveling on this piece. From the right, let's take that little function out. Let's be a little more specific. Let's put in 2x plus 5. And now that I have some specific expressions, if you will, I can plug into, let's take these twos and let's plug in and see what we get. You take two, you plug into x squared plus three, now you get four plus three, you get seven back. And if you take two and you plug in down here to two x plus five, get four plus five, so we get nine back. These are not the same. Since those are not the same, and we're trying to find the limit as x approaches 2 overall, apply to this function, does not exist. That's colorful.